Oh my gosh, guys, one of my chickens are sick. What am I gonna do now? So that statement we have said to ourselves and to each other several different times in the last couple years that we've owned chickens. Fortunately for right now, we don't have a sick chicken. Thank goodness. But we had one recently and it's probably our one chicken that gives us the most trouble at all. The one chicken that we've learned the most about chicken medicine is one chicken. So ladies and gentlemen, this is Bok Bok. And if you guys have been following our channel, you have seen her in a couple videos. She's been treated from anything from an eye infection to pneumonia to bumblefoot. But it's a bad day when you come out and you're about to put up your chickens and you notice one of them is sick. I know that's typically where we've noticed it or when we put them out in the morning is we hear something different or they don't look right or they're not acting right. See, this is typical normal behavior for all these chickens. But, a, you know, about a month and a half ago or two months ago, I came out and we heard one kind of chirping, like it was like a sneeze or a cough or something. And it was poor little Bok Bok. She could hardly even breathe. Quick diagnosis uh, with my chicken mentor <laughs> over, over the phone. We're able to give her some, uh, some stuff to make her feel better. Disclaimer, I'm not a vet. I don't try to portray one on it on, on YouTube. This is how we've done it. This is how we've been instructed to do it. We're giving you guys this information. You can do with it what you will. But again, I'm not a I'm not an expert. I'm not a vet. Uh, the first thing I would say, get you a chicken mentor. So what do I mean by chicken mentor? So a chicken mentor is a person that you can call or reach out to or have contact with. At any given time and say hey I got this issue with my chicken or hey my chickens doing this or what can I do about this with my chicken and they're willing to help you and it could be any time of night or maybe not any time of night but you know what I'm saying um, you know they're willing to help and 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 they will help you along these situations I know I have mine she's awesome Kara I love you you're awesome having a good person or people to reach out to Chickens are a little different on vets. I mean, we do have a vet nearby, and guess what? Bok Bok has been to the vet. None of our other chickens have been to a vet, but Bok Bok has. So far, we've been able to treat Bok Bok uh, really outside of the vet more than we have the time that she did. Uh, the, like the time she did, they gave her some antibiotics, it didn't work. So what we've done here on the homestead has really helped her out in multiple different occasions. And we'll go over some of those, but the first thing I want to show you is, is what kind of items, medicine, you know, supplies do we have on the homestead ready to take care of one of our animals? Well, folks, we're back inside and we're going to go over what kind of medical treatment supplies we keep here on the homestead for our chickens. So we have a nice little container we keep them in. And we got some bigger ones that we don't have a container for. And I guess we can hit those up first. The first one is Epsom salt. So we typically use this if we have to like soak uh, an appendage of a, of a chicken, like one of their feet or their legs. And uh, you know, we have a video of us putting, um, doing a non-invasive treatment for Bumblefoot. It's one of our first videos. We're trying to be real cute with it, kind of make it a spa day. So we'll put a video up at the end, right over here somewhere. Uh, on that one. So if you guys want to check that out what we do we actually use some of the products that We're going to show you today in that video Now we have had to go and be a little more evasive with her a couple times uh, To get bumblefoot cured. We did not uh, Tape any of that footage um, We just didn't think it was appropriate for our channel at that point to, to do it Unfortunately got a little bloody and some other stuff. So, you know There's plenty of videos out there to show you how to be evasive on bumblefoot. We just didn't want to add to it. So anyways Epsom salt, get the non-fragrance. Again, I don't know if it would make a difference or not, but we just got the plain Jane non-fragrant, generic, cheapest one we can get at Walmart kind of deal. Rubbing alcohol, peroxide, those type of, of solutions, uh, you know, help sterilize equipment. 
if you have to use any kind of needles or, or, or cutting devices, tweezers or, or those kind of things. One of the things that we don't have in our in our kit that we'd really like to have is, I know this is kind of gross, but have you guys ever seen any of those pimple popping videos on YouTube or Facebook or whatever? Some of those devices they use could be very helpful treating bumblefoot and some, maybe some other skin ailments for chickens or even other animals. So that may be something on our list to get here in the future, but we don't have it now, those items. Another part of it, when you get into the kit, uh, self-adhering bandages. So this is just like athletic tape that you would find at the store at, you know, like like your pharmacy. It just kind of wraps around itself. We have some for, you know, all the animals, dogs, goats, chickens. We like the thinner, but the one inch size for the chickens, it seemed to work really good for them since they're smaller and you don't have to cut it. If it gets any thicker or wider, you're gonna have to cut it anyway. So if you can just get the, the shorter one, better off. So some other things we have in our little goodie basket here. Just some regular like gauze pads, especially if you're having to do some evasive, more uh, evasive treatments, those kind of things, really helpful to kind of clean up and, and kind of move some, um, some material out of the way if you need to, and these are really good to have. Of course, a good pair of scissors. And for if whatever reason, if this isn't sticking right, or a, a animal or chicken is, has been able to peck it and get it pulled off, you can go to the extreme measure and get some more athletic style tape that's a little bit more heavier duty. A little bit harder to get off. That's why we prefer this style over this, but this will work. Triple antibiotic cream, you know, nor, uh, Neosporin kind of stuff. So for those times when they have cuts or you're, you're having to do a little evasive action when it comes to you know, bumblefoot or you're doing a cut or those kind of things. Uh, iodine or this betadine is really good for that. It, it really helps out with uh, deterring infections after the fact. This uh, is an item, Vetericin Plus. We've used this a lot uh, for any kind of cuts. And what it says here is for, this is Vetericin Plus. It's not an antibiotic. Uh, it's pecking wounds, cuts, frostbite, vent prolapse. It contains no antibiotics. Uh, so if you're looking for an a non-antibiotic solution to those kind of things. This could be your solution. We've used this a lot and it's treated bumblefoot and got it cured. Um, any other kind of scrapes, cuts, it's it's worked really well. So definitely you can get this at your tractor supply. You can get it at, you know, Atwoods, your, your ag store, whatever it may be in your area. Look this up, you can get it online, Amazon. Definitely a plus um, to have in your arsenal. Another thing we like to have is just simple saline solution. Like this is a nasal spray, but it's just saline. It has a little nozzle up there. You can kind of point down to the wound and spray it and get it cleaned out. Really helpful to get some of that icky stuff out so you can actually see what the damage is or see what the problem is with the animal. And it works really, really well for that. So, so another item we use is this stuff called VetRx. And, and we've found this at our ag store. And typically when we use this, it's for some kind of a respiratory issue, you know, like with Bok Bok. I know, I'm, I know I keep saying going back to Bok Bok, but she's the one that keeps having the issues if we have any issues. But so when she had the pneumonia, not only did we give her the antibiotics, but we also used this. And there's many different ways to use this. I'm not gonna go through all of them, but just some, some of the ways that we treated her with it is we put some in her water, we put some on her comb right back here at the very back. We put some underneath her wing. And, you know, it kind of has like a herbal smell to it, like a, it almost smells like a, like an essential oil concoction to me. But, but it, it seemed to work. Maybe it just opens them up, kind of like Vicks does for us or something. But that is a very good option. Um, it's 100% natural, and it really seems to do a pretty good job with, with some of those type of issues. And again, this is something you guys to look for in an extreme case. We've had to use this a couple times on Bok Bok. Like I said, all of our medical knowledge comes through Bok Bok. Thank goodness we haven't had very many sick chickens. Um, we had one sick chicken that just died. We didn't know what it was. We think it may be a little heat stroke, or we just don't know, you know. Just didn't know, but uh, other than that, uh, Bok Bok's the one that's gave us all of our training. 
So, so I have gave her antibiotics, and then you know you can just get them at the ag store. Now, again, disclaimer: I'm not a vet. I don't try to portray to be a vet on YouTube in any fashion at all. But I have a very good chicken mentor. At least I think she's a very good chicken mentor. And this is what she's instructed me to do a couple times to help out Bok Bok and it's helped. So, you know, we've gave her some antibiotics. You have to give it to her needle and a, and a you know, and a syringe. Pretty nerve wracking when you have to give a chicken a shot because uh, how we do it is you have to go through the neck skin, but just underneath the skin, not into the meat. And you know, you have to move feathers out of the way and someone has to hold and it's just a nerve wracking situation, but it, it can be done and it, and it has helped. But again, you know, I know some people do not want to give their animals antibiotics. And, and if you do, you have to, you know, if she starts laying eggs again, you will have to let her, you know, you're going to have to waste those eggs for probably a good month almost. That's what we give them is a month. And we just throw them away and put them in our compost or whatever we may do with them and, and just don't eat them because, you know, we want all that stuff to get cycled through her body and out. And we just don't want to be eating antibiotics either. But we also want a healthy chicken. So... So those are the items that we have in our toolkit when it comes to taking care of our chickens. Uh, most of the time, don't have to use it. Uh, it's just in our, we just have this in a cabinet. And like I said, some of it we have to kind of keep out because it's bigger. We just have this on hand and you're ready to go. Well folks, hopefully that's helped you guys out uh, to try to figure out what you may need for your chicken kit. If you guys use something different in your in your chicken kit, let us know. Uh, we'd be glad to put it on our list and uh, and and kind of kind of start adding to it because because you always find new products or you find something new way to treat something. So we definitely appreciate any help in that aspect. Well, folks, that's all we have for tonight. Thank you guys for coming back. If you haven't already, click that subscribe button right down here. We'd appreciate it. It really does help out the channel. And for those that are new to our channel, thank you for coming back and watching the video. And for those longtime listeners and watchers, we really appreciate you. You guys have a blessed day. And from our homestead to yours, we'll catch you on the next video.